Hello there. Welcome to the fifth devlog of Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog, and what I'm hoping to achieve by the next one. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. I made a basic prototype of a start screen menu that has working buttons as well as a functioning options menu. When you select single player, it'll immediately load you into the game. When you press credits, it'll take you to the credits screen, and you can hit the back button to go back. When you press quit, it'll quit the game. When you press options, it will take you to the options screen, and the back button will take you back. The options menu is actually working in terms of settings graphics. The options you see right now are more focused on graphic settings for now, but once more sounds have been implemented, I'll try to get some sound adjustment settings going for the game. Let's go over what each of the options will do. Window mode will set your window mode to either be full screen or windowed, as shown here. Display resolution will allow you to set the resolution of the game. Frame rate limit will set a limit, or none at all, in terms of how many frames per second your game will be rendered. View distance or render distance will set how far away something can be viewed in the game. Post processing will allow you to set the quality of how good the game looks when you're playing it. The amount of anti-aliasing can also be set in order to help your game run smoother if the images look a bit too sharp or too realistic. Texture quality will also allow you to set the quality of textures when playing the game. Shadow quality will allow you to set the quality of shadows to help with the performance of the game. There is a way to save your settings, so if we save the settings to have it on very low graphic settings by hitting the save button down below, we can save the options, hit back, and select single player to see that our game now looks and runs really badly, but this shows that we've saved the settings, which is really good to have. The optimal settings button will allow you to do a quick benchmark test on your computer to set the optimal settings for the game to run smoothly enough. In my case, since my computer is on the higher end, it will set the graphics to a higher level, and I can set my FPS to be unlimited since my computer can handle it. We'll save that and then load up the game to show you that the settings have been saved and successfully set. The parasite can now successfully hear and investigate any noises that it can hear. As you can see, our parasite enemy is roaming around, but when I shoot the pistol, the parasite will immediately start heading toward the source of the noise. Once the parasite reaches the point where the gunshot was heard, it will investigate for about 3 seconds to see if it can see any players that made the noise. If it doesn't see any players, it will resume patrolling as seen on screen. For right now, this only works with the gunshot, but I do plan on adding more sound detections for the parasite, such as hearing running footsteps and other kinds of sounds that get played in the game. I've made a basic shop room where players can go to access the shop as seen on screen now. I've just got a small hallway that leads to a small room, and this is the room where you can go to purchase things from the shop, and when you're ready, you can start the next maze by pulling this lever, and the lever will open the door next to it. I also got some pretty neat neon lights because I think they make the shop feel a bit cooler. The shop now also spawns in wherever the exit spawns in, so I'm happy that it was fairly simple to set up. I've got these spawning mazes working as well. Once you enter inside of the shop and walk in towards the main area, there will be a trigger that activates once you touch it. And when it triggers, it will despawn the level, despawn the exit door, and make a wall appear behind you so you can't go back. I've also added functionality to make a new maze spawn when you flip the switch in the shop. Since there's only two mazes, I decided to just use my test maze for this, but when you flip the switch, it will spawn in the test maze and open the door. Of course, when I make more mazes, I want those mazes to be randomly selected, and that should be pretty easy to implement once I've designed the mazes. Last but not least, I added in a lever and a door inside of the start room. The lever will act as a way to start the game, sort of how Lethal Company does it where you flip the switch to land on a moon. When you flip the switch, the first maze will spawn and the door will open, and this marks the beginning of the game, and I think this is a much better system instead of starting the game right away when spawning in. I've done a lot for this devlog, so let's focus on what my goals are for the next devlog. Finish designing two more mazes. I know that I need to be able to randomly spawn in more maze types, and I've been subconsciously avoiding designing more mazes since it's pretty time consuming, but I'll ensure that I knock those out in the next devlog. I'll finish up the very dark maze that you've seen occasionally, and I plan on also adding in a hedge maze of some kind, as I think that would be pretty cool to have. If I have time, I'll see if I can't make any more levels for the next devlog, but right now, making two levels is just my goal. Timers to automatically put the players into the maze. What I mean by this is, if a player starts a maze but then decides to hang back in a safe zone for whatever reason, I want there to be a 15 second period where the player needs to enter the maze. If they don't enter the maze within this time period, the player will then be teleported inside of the beginning portion of the maze. This is needed because I would like to despawn the shop and start room once the players enter inside of the maze, and the maze and shops are safe zones where enemies cannot get to the players. So, to prevent abuse of this by a player hanging back in the start room or shop area, I feel that this is the best solution, at least for now. And before we end today's devlog, I want to let you all know that we've got a Discord server for Labyrinthophobia. The server is the official Digital Kingdom server that me and Digital Kingdom have, and a channel for Labyrinthophobia has been made as part of this server, so all Labyrinthophobia stuff will be in that channel. If you want the latest updates and notifications on Labyrinthophobia, as well as be able to talk to me in a more direct way about the game, I highly encourage you to join. Link is down in the description. I feel that a good amount of progress has made in this devlog of Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKA for short, and I'll see you in the next one.